Good afternoon, everybody. Bienvenidos. Año Han Seo. I'd like to welcome all graduating students, their families, distinguished guests, friends, faculty, and staff to our departmental graduation ceremony. My name is Miguel Garcia Garibay. As a chair of the department of chemistry and biochemistry, it is a pleasure to preside this ceremony. What do you think? This is a beautiful day to celebrate the accomplishments of the chemistry and biochemistry graduating class of 2015, isn't it? Before we begin, I would like to introduce our distinguished guests who are present with us today. They are alumnus Miyoki Hong, who we will be hearing a lot more about in a few minutes. He is joined today with his, by his wife, Lori Hong, son David Hong, assistant John Su, and UCLA uh, alumni, fellow alumni, Chang Jack Wan, Jay Mi Chan, the CEO and president of the Korea Times, and Los Angeles City Councilman David Drew. We're very pleased that you have that, to have you with our at UCLA. We are also joined by Joseph Rodnick, Dean of the Division of Physical Sciences and Senior Dean of the College of Letters and Sciences. As you know, the official, the official conferring of degrees in the graduate division and college took place Thursday and Friday. This afternoon is our special opportunity to bring together those of us in the UCLA community who are associated with the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, and to acknowledge and recognize the accomplishments of our graduate Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, and Doctor of Philosophy candidates. As chair of this department, I congratulate you on joining a distinguished family of alumni. We hope that you will continue to consider UCLA and our department your home away from home. We will be proud to count each of you as a chemistry and biochemistry UCLA ruin for life. I also congratulate your families, your parents, grandparents, spouses, partners, sisters and brothers, daughters and sons, and other family members who have stood by you and supported you through the highs and lows of your studies. Let us give them a big round of applause. The program for our graduation ceremony is as follows. We will begin with the presentation of the Annual Alumni Award and the graduation address by Dr. Myung Ki Hong. Then we will confer graduate awards, then honor the PhD and master's candidates. We will then honor the undergraduate prizes. We will award the undergraduate prizes and honors. And finally, we will recognize each of the bachelor's candidates. At this point, I would like to welcome Dean Joseph Rodnick to the stage to present the 2015 Chemistry and Biochemistry Alumni Award. So thank you, Miguel, and thank you for allowing me to have the honor to uh, present the 2015 Chemistry and Biochemistry Alumni Award. Uh, the award actually was initiated in 2012 to recognize the, the extraordinary contributions that their alumni have made to both science and society. Um, this year, the department identified somebody truly exceptional. So now it's my great honor to present the 2015 Chemistry and Biochemistry Alumni Award to Dr. Myung Ki Hong. Dr. Myung 
Sung Hee Kong is a philanthropist and a leader in the Korean American community. He came to the United States from South Korea in 1954 as an exchange student, and he graduated from UCLA in 1959 with a degree in chemistry. His UCLA training led him to a distinguished career as a resin and coatings chemist. In 1986, he founded Duracoat Products Incorporated, a company specializing in high-performance coatings for metal surfaces, which now distributes its technology through licensing agreements with companies all over the world. Dr. Hong is de also deeply committed to philanthropic and civic causes in Southern California. After the civil unrest in Los Angeles in 1992, he committed himself to fostering community harmony by promoting a better understanding of cultural diversity. He served as chairman of a foundation dedicated to preserving the memory of Do San Ang Chang Ho, one of the early leaders of the Korean American immigrant community. In this capacity, he oversaw the dedication of the Do San Ang Chang Ho statue in Riverside in 2001. In 2002, Dr. Hong established the Bright World Foundation, based actually on a translation of his Korean name, Young Ki, which means bright place, to foster a sense of optimism in the world and inspire the human spirit. Dr. Hong received an honorary doctorate for humanitarian services from La Sierra University in 2002, as well as an honorary doctorate in science from Sam Yuk University in South Korea in 2014. Dr. Hong has been a generous supporter of UCLA. He participated in the establishment of the UCLA Korea Times Hong Kuk Ilbo Endowed Chair in Korean American Studies, which is now held by Professor Jerry Kang in our School of Law. By the way, uh, Professor Kang is about to take a very important post at UCLA. He will be the inaugural Vice Chair for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion on this campus. Uh, I'm pleased, as Dr. Garibay was, to welcome Dr. Hong's family members who are in the audience, his wife, Mrs. Lori Hong, his son, David. We are grateful that both of you are here to join us today. And it is now my pleasure to yield the lectern to Dr. Myung Hiki Hong for the commencement address. Good afternoon, Dean Lodney, Chair Professor Garibay, distinguished faculty, ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of 2015. It's an honor and a pleasure to be back here at my alma mater, UCLA. Just about 56 years ago, I was not sitting where you are but in front of Royce Hall. Some things haven't changed. The graduation gowns are still too hot. <laughs> we were as glad as you are to be done with the test quizzes, midterms, and the finals. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> in a minute, you will graduate. You will soon forget some of your classmates, but you never forget your graduation or your school. And you should have. The chairs you sat on, the laboratory you used, the buildings you studied in, were well, that's not kept from Santa Claus. Most of the campus came from previous graduates who were grateful for what this school did for them, and do the same. Your future success is best to share. Greed is a disease, and giving is the truth. You may never have it all, but you will have enough to share. Let's start with a story about a boy from Seoul, Korea. Let's call him Mike Hong. As sometimes happens, in a lot of families, and especially in cultures where the welfare of the parents 
comes before the spouse, mothers and their mother-in-laws don't get along. It's especially bad in families living under one roof. Harmony gets replaced by conflict until eventually changes are inevitable. In my family, the final score was mom, zero, grandmother, one. I was raised by my grandmother. For years, my mom would call my name from the street. I had to go outside and to see her talk to her. My father was in the motion picture industries. He traveled in circles that attracted many who were young, pretty, and aspiring. My father changed them like a calendar pages. There was always a new stem mom. They came and went like the seasons. When I was five, I got a real stepmother, one who lasted. She and my father had six children. I was the oldest of the seven, and the one he didn't, who didn't quite fit. I was a half-brother, and they were all full siblings. The family situation wasn't good. Korea's landscape was war-torn, and I realized I had to leave. Eventually, I made my way to the U.S., and I studied chemistry here at UCLA. It wasn't easy. I could read English pretty well, but the spoken language was very hard because everyone had an accent except me. <laughs> To make of matters worse, students were required to take German in order to major in chemistry those days. I worked my way through school. I had a job in the chemistry department's stock room and another as a houseboy in Beverly Hills. Want to pull cold water on your college years? Be a houseboy. I looked for other jobs, I would say, do you have an opening for an ambitious chemistry student from UCLA? And they will say, yes, we do. There is opening right behind you. And the please cross it gently on your way out. My senior year was especially hard. I didn't have enough money to finish. I only needed $200 for my tuition. There was a lot of money for a room and board houseboy. I tried unsuccessfully to get a bank loan. I went to many of my professors. I asked almost everyone I could think of. As a last resort, I went to my English teacher and told her that unless I got the money for my tuition, I couldn't graduate. She listened, but was hesitant. Then she said, check back with her in the morning. It was a long night. The next morning, she took me to the bank, cashed in a bond, and gave me the $200 I needed to graduate. Her name was Miss Remnus. She was an angel. I graduated, got a real job, and when I cashed my first paycheck, I took her money and said, here is $200. I'll bring the interest when I get my next paycheck. She said, Michael, no, no. Just seeing you graduate is a payment enough. A glorious angel. For the next 22 years, I worked for a company in research and developed the resin technology that was patented. One of my projects, turned out to be a product the company didn't choose to market. So I decided to move on. I rented the shared space at age 51, started my own business. But again, it wasn't easy. Because I developed a product while working for the other company, it did not belong to me. Even so, it was my concept and my work. I had to start over. It was the perfect opportunity for a pity party, but instead, 
I focus not on what was lost, but what was left to gain. I still had my abilities and my faith. One of the essential chemicals was on consignment, which meant I couldn't get it except on the black market at outrageous prices. So I began again with an approach that didn't infringe on my original pattern and uh, used available chemicals. It was a tough journey. My wife would bring my dinner so I could keep working at night. Then everything changed. When I got my very first customer, the first one is always the hardest, but also sweet. They are still my customers. Now I have customers around the world. From those early days, here are nine simple principles that guided me. Number one, patience. Acorns may grow into mighty oaks, but not overnight. You get the chicken by waiting for the egg to hatch, not by cracking it. Michelangelo said the genius, genius is eternal patience. Our immediate gratification society hasn't grasped the concept of patience, but I hope you will. Anything worthwhile takes time. Number two, enthusiasm. Is your best companion on the path to anywhere? Charles Schwab said a man can succeed at almost anything for which he has unlimited enthusiasm. If you are not fired up with enthusiasm, at some point you will likely be enthusiastically fired. Number three, resilience. The any dot setbacks somewhere in your life and in your career, you will suffer setbacks. They will be certainly unpleasant. Expect it. It's okay to get knocked down. Not okay to stay down. An ancient saying, fall seven times, stand up eight. Many of life's failures are people who gave up, not realizing how close they were to success. What if the inventor had given up at WD-30 or stopped at 6 up? Number four, salesmanship is vital. No one is better able to tell you a story than you. You have the talent to sell it. Your suggestions, your ideas, your vision, your product is used to sell. Number five, endurance is the will to continue on despite fatigue, stress, or adversity. Most people never run far enough on the first win to even find out they have a second. Keep going. Press on. Life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Number six, vision. People like Steve Jobs or Elon Musk come to mind. But your vision doesn't have to be so grand that it changes the world. Envision your future and set the strategy for getting there. Vision without action is just a dream. Act on it. It is not enough to stay up the steps of success. You must step up the stairs. Number seven, empathy. Simply put, love your neighbor as yourself. Walk the mile in someone else's shoes. Their pain is everywhere as meaningful as your own. Lend an ear, reach out a hand, show concern. When you understand the pain and the needs of others, it makes you more grateful, more generous, more human. Number eight, rest. Even God rested. You too need to take care of yourself. 
and to your family, your team, and your supporters. They need rest too. Your career drive might be so intense that others are ignored. You need to rest and rejuvenate, and so do they. Refresh your soul, and then go at it again. Number nine, finally, enjoy. Believe me, life is short. Make the journey as meaningful as the destination. The most valuable thing any of us have is time. Money can be replaced. Possession cannot be replaced. But time cannot. So savor it. Don't spend it all at the lab or office. There has never been a person on their deathbed who said, I wish I had to spend more time working. These nine principles are an acrostic that spells persevere. Practice living that word, and you will do well. My fellow Bruins, I extend to you my heartfelt congratulations. You have come far. Now just keep moving forward. Give some back and persevere. Thank you.